Hello and welcome to Central Focus. I'm your host, Travis Cleckley, and today we have a very recent controversial issue, medical marijuana. I'll be joined with the Chair of Nutrition, Exercise, and Health Sciences, Dr. Vince Nethery, to discuss health issues, and later on with Professor of Sociology, Dr. Nelson Pichardo, to talk about the legal side of things. Stay tuned. <music> controversial nature of medical marijuana. Let's first dive into the history behind this ancient plant and how it has developed from a simple cure for common illness into a highly illegal substance. Unbeknownst to most people, the plant has its roots in ancient China. Central Focus set out to learn more. The use of marijuana for medical purposes is nothing new. Legend has it that Chinese Emperor Shen Nung was prescribing medical marijuana as early as 2700 BC for diseases such as rheumatism, gout, malaria, and believe it or not, memory loss. Use spread slowly from China into India and North Africa and finally into Europe as early as 500 AD. America did not see marijuana until 1545 and it was brought over by Spanish conquistadors and it was grown throughout the 1600s as a source of fiber. Through the 1800s, marijuana was found in many medicines and it was not until 1914 under the Harrison Act that casual use was classified as a crime. During the 1920s, more and more states placed restrictions on marijuana. It wasn't until 1937 under the Marijuana Tax Act that non-medical use became completely illegal. Fast forward to 1970, marijuana was placed as a Schedule One drug and declared to have no medical use. We're out here on the street finding out what people think about marijuana and legalization. Let's get these guys. Excuse me. I'm for it. Okay, why are you for it? Because I think uh, making it illegal is just like prohibition with alcohol. It just creates more problems than some. Okay, in November on the ballot, what are you going to vote? I'll vote for legalization. Okay, how do you feel about uh, medical marijuana? I think that definitely should be legal right away. Okay. Um, how do you feel about marijuana legalization? I think it should be legalized. Okay, why do you feel it should be legalized? There are people that are in uh, pain, they're using it as a medical situation to help their, their, their health situation, their, their pain, okay? Okay, how do you, do you feel it should be, uh, did I already ask how it should be legalized? Do you feel it should be legalized completely? Oh, for everyone, right? Yes. Okay, let me think about that. As far as I'm concerned, I'm not... Legalized for anything. I think I've seen some kind of um, police person talk about this, and he has thought that really to to legalize the various drugs is going to be a long, in, in a way, in terms of kind of keeping control of it, better than what it's like now. Um, okay. I feel if they can make money off of it, it would be a good thing. But then again, I don't feel very strongly about marijuana since it is very bad for your health and lung cancer. So I'd have to say no. Okay, how do you feel about medical marijuana then? Um, I feel medical marijuana is kind of a loophole in the system and it allows not just younger kids but it allows a large assessment of people to get marijuana legally and I still am not very strong into that. You know, I'm really, really neutral towards marijuana legalization but I really don't feel like it can really harm anyone. Okay, how do you feel about medical marijuana? Medical marijuana, I kind of think that that's actually really helping people. Okay. Why do you feel it's helping people? Well, <laughs> we hear the, uh, the glaucoma excuse, and, you know, sometimes it actually does help. And I actually have a couple of um, relatives that do use medical marijuana, and so far it does help them out. Well, I think uh, the current system is very flawed. So I think legalizing it could help out a lot. Why so. do you feel the current system is flawed? Well, there's a lot more deadly drugs. And if you just look at the benefits of like legalizing it, there's a lot of taxable income with that. And a lot of people are put into prisons for something like having a minor possession of marijuana. So, How do you feel about medical marijuana? Medical marijuana? I think... Uh, used properly is very good but there's the signing of kind of prescriptions that people don't really need so there's definitely flaws but I think there's a pretty good thing with the medical marijuana. 
How do you feel about marijuana legalization? I don't feel strongly either way about the issue. Okay. What? How do you feel about medical marijuana? Um, it's okay as long as you have a medical card, I guess, and it's not being abused. How do you feel about marijuana legalization? Honestly, I don't have an opinion. If you want, if you want it, that's good for you. I could care less. How do you feel about medical marijuana? I think for some it does help, but it's too easily abused. After California legalized medical marijuana in 1996, 15 other states have followed, allowing those with proper paperwork, such as Brian Grimmer, to possess and use medical marijuana. In my adult years, um, after suffering a motorcycle accident, uh, I discovered it was helpful in treating my back pain. Cannabis, uh, uh, another benefit is, is that not only does it help a person manage their, their body's pain, but pain has a, has a secondary side effect of making a person very irritable. Cannabis can uplift that mood and bring, it, bring the person into a more positive state of mind. Besides his claim that marijuana will create a more positive state of mind, Grimmer also believes medical marijuana is a safer painkiller than opiates. Opiates are very addictive. Cannabis is not. Um, opiates have a very low threshold as far as a toxic dose. Cannabis, you would need to smoke something about the size of a telephone pole within 14 minutes to be able to overdose on it. You're gonna pass out, or you're gonna overdose from CO2 and carbon, carbon uh, monoxide before you would the actual THC. In addition to beliefs that marijuana is a safe painkiller, the University of California, San Francisco, released a study in January 2012 finding that marijuana was less harmful than tobacco for the heart and lungs. As part of that California cannabis research initiative that they've got going on down there, um, my understanding is that. Cannabis, in its pure natural form, untreated, unfertile, you know, been properly grown and so on, is actually less harmful to the lungs than tobacco. Grimmer urges the public to take a stance. Let's get a federal policy in effect that recognizes patients as well as adults' right to choose a substance that is safer than alcohol. Heck, it's safer than cough medicine. Safer than cough medicine. I'm here with Dr. Vince Nethery to discuss the health side of things. Dr. Nethery, it's nice to have you here. Thank you, Travis. So, many medical marijuana users say they prefer it as a painkiller to opiates. What are the health benefits to using it as opposed to, say, opiates? Well, one of the challenges that we face in uh, those types of statements is uh, w what evidence exists that there's safety or effectiveness in all of this. Medical or marijuana as a drug has, has not undergone any type of uh, assessment procedures through typical FDA types of uh, Food and Drug Administration types of procedures to uh, determine efficacy or, or effectiveness or uh, treatment dosage levels. Uh, so uh, to make some type of broad statement about more or less effective than something else uh, is, uh, at this point, it's a fairly baseless type of comparison to make. What are the health risks of marijuana? Well, the, the, the question is more, is there health risks using marijuana in general? Now, for, the, for whatever reason the per person might be using it, uh, perhaps uh, it's for medical reasons as they might see it. If we look at marijuana and its, its typical ingestion method, it's, it's a smoked product. Uh, there's 6,000 odd chemicals in the smoking of marijuana that are common to the smoking of tobacco. Uh, many of those chemical elements are recognized as being pathogenic in nature, create sorts of dysfunctions, carcinogenic, maybe they interfere with immune system functioning. Uh, and uh, to, to perhaps suggest that there's, it's a safe product, uh, I don't think there's any evidence at all that would suggest there's safety to it, or even indeed whether it's more safe than uh, smoking tobacco products for that matter. Okay, so, but there was a study from University of California, San Francisco, that did say that marijuana uses was less harmful. Can you, can you comment on that? Sure. Uh, my first comment is, uh, where was the study done? 
And of course, that's the cynical side of it that says San Francisco, California, you know. But, but in all seriousness, uh, there are a number of ways in which comparisons between cigarette smoking and marijuana need to be, to be looked at to uh, level the, the, the playing field and make the comparisons valid. Uh, reasonable levels of tobacco smoking might be one to one and a half packets a day. That's 30 cigarettes a day. Uh, I don't know what a reasonable level of marijuana usage would be. I suspect 30 equivalent tobacco units a day would be pretty heavy use of, of marijuana. So we have to look at what sort of dosages individuals are taking in. Not only do we have to look at the dosages that are being taken in, because remember, it's not just the, the THC, the cannabis unit of marijuana, it's the 6,000 chemicals that are associated with the combustion of these products as well. That, okay, so the number of units that are being taken in might not be 20 or 30, it might be 5 or 10. Does that mean it's uh, more safe or, or, or less harmful than cigarettes? Then you have to look at uh, the, the procedures utilized in the smoking of them. For example, the two, fairly, the, the two very common, uh, quite harmful elements in tobacco and marijuana are carbon monoxide and uh, uh, a benzene product that we commonly refer to as, as tar. And so certainly uh, if one says 25 cigarettes or 30 cigarettes a day uh, results in this much carbon monoxide and this much tar, what does 10 equivalent marijuana cigarettes bring in? And you might say, well, it's about a third as much. However, when you look at the style in which marijuana is often inhaled, where the breath hold is often much longer to give more time for the diffusion of the, the, the chemicals across into circulation to impact uh, the effect it has on, on uh, euphoria, etc that it's typically held five to seven times longer in the lung tissue. And so you really then have to multiply the number of exposures, as in you know, a, an equivalent cigarette, by about five to get the, the, the um, tar deposition and the carbon monoxide exposure. So there are a lot of factors that need to be looked at when one is making that type of comparison. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. But a lot of people say that smoking marijuana, I guess this ties in with what you were saying, how, uh, like before, it's not a really a fair comparison, but they say it doesn't cause lung cancer like tobacco, which we all know does. And why would that be? Do you think it's from what you said before? Well, a again, there's, there's uh, dose response uh, levels that need to be looked at. Um, and there's also the component of genetic susceptibility. You might have individuals who smoke two packs a day and they live to be 85 or 90. They're a very small minority for all of those who would smoke two packs a day. In fact, most of them would probably be dying in their 60s if they even make it that far. However, there are some that live in right through to, to 80s and 90s perhaps, and they are heavy smokers. So what determines whether somebody is going to get or not get certain diseases is a combination of the environmental cues that they're exposed to and the genetic base that determines their susceptibility to it. So it's very, very difficult to make broad generalizations about if they did this, would they get that? Or if they didn't do this, would they still get that? Okay, so you don't think it's like anything to do with like anti-cancer properties of THC or anything like that? Well, when you look at the 6,000 odd chemicals that are common to both tobacco products and to marijuana smoking, mm -hmm. and a lot of those are recognized as carcinogenic in nature, they're immunosuppressive in nature, uh, they're genetotoxic in nature, they have the ability to, to manipulate and, and ultimately result in some type of birth defect uh, or immunosuppressive, uh, reduced immune responses. There's a lot of common chemicals between tobacco and marijuana and, and uh, I don't see any validity in a, in a statement that says that, you know, that, that one is going to be far more harmful than the other. All right, well, 
Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to appear on our show. And now we'll get into the legal side of the issue. Did you know that Ellensburg has a collective garden? Central Focus hunted down Mayor Bruce Tabb to discuss the legality of collective gardens and dispensaries. With, with the ordinance that we passed for collective gardens, gardens was uh, really just giving a local structure to what was already state law. We, we didn't legalize it. Um, we're not doing anything that was is not already defined in state law. We're really giving it a regulatory framework so that if there were a report, for instance, of someone having a garden, um, the police department would have a clear understanding of what whether that's legal, whether that's not legal, and then be able to act accordingly. And so it sort of protects both the people who participate in the garden and, and gives uh, the city an ability to understand what's occurring within the city limits. This year, Ellensburg became one of the few cities to allow a collective garden, but some members of the community wanted a dispensary. The reason we haven't enacted an ordinance um, really that legalizes or, or allows dispensaries is that there's a really gray legal area now about the, vi uh, the legal standing of uh, dispensaries. Um, the other challenge with the dispensaries has been, um, as we just saw, I think it was Tacoma, uh, where the, the feds came in and um, arrested a f quite a few people, um, is that, you know, the dispensing of marijuana, wherever you fall in, in, in the spectrum, is, is still considered to be a federal crime, and the feds maintain jurisdiction over that. According to some, the state would gain more from legalization than if marijuana was kept illegal. I, you know, I don't, I don't know that there's a downside, um, you know, to, you know, we can argue or discuss health issues. You can talk about the kinds of things that marijuana may or may not do to you, the, you know, the effect that it has. Um, you know, but for, from, from my perspective, you can make the same arguments about alcohol and alcohol use and the abuse of alcohol. I mean, that's occurring. We haven't, uh, we tried to, to uh, criminalize alcohol. It didn't work very well. Um, in certain ways, we have taken the same tact with marijuana. You know, it's, it's out there, people are using it. It's created an, an incredible uh, underground economy. It's criminalized people who probably are never, would never be criminals except for um, having run into the legal system around marijuana. Um, and we're foregoing an incredible amount of revenue by not, by not legalizing it and allowing the governments to basically support and regulate the, the trade. said that people who wouldn't normally be criminalized are criminalized just because they run into the legal system surrounding marijuana. I'm here with sociologist Dr. Nelson Pachado to delve into the legal aspects. Thank you for joining us. Oh, you're quite welcome. So what is the current legality of marijuana? Well, it depends. Uh, right now, of course, federally speaking, marijuana is illegal. It's illegal for recreational use across the board. There are no exceptions to that. Now, there are 15 states where uh, the, a medical marijuana law was passed, and that uh, creates this uh, tension between the state and the federal government when you have the state saying you can use it under certain restrictions, you've got a, a prescription, medical condition, limit the amount of marijuana that you have or can grow. Uh, but if the federal government takes an interest in you, you have no recourse. You are going to be penalized. So why do you think that is? Like, why isn't it legal federally? Why can states have it legalized? Because uh, I think states often are the uh, point of change. Mm -hmm. You see different states adopting different statutes. Think about uh, the uh, gay marriage laws, yeah. all right? And so they are often at the foreground of change. And change at the federal level is actually quite difficult. Uh, the way our government is structured, it is a lot of veto points, so it's hard to get something done. It's often easier to get it done in the states. Mm -hmm. But fundamentally, the question is, is that the federal government has chosen to uh, label marijuana as a Schedule One drug. That means, by definition, it has no medical benefits whatsoever. Okay. And it is that classification which is at the root of the tension between the state and the federal government. Okay, so um, if it was made legal in November, like what would change? Really? In the state of Washington? Yes, in the state of Washington. Well, uh, when you think about, uh, um, are you talking about decriminalization here? Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, when you think about decriminalization, mm -hmm. uh, you have to think about the negative social aspects of criminalizing marijuana. Mm -hmm. We know from our past experience, our own uh, history, that prohibition doesn't work. Mm -hmm. uh, we have seen uh, lots of evidence lately 
that when you remove prohibition, like they have done recently in Portugal, that actually addiction rates go down, okay? So prohibition uh, doesn't work and is, is problematic. Um, other than that, uh, there'll still be this big tension between the federal government and state government, but statewide, you're gonna see less police resources targeting uh, marijuana users, and I think that's a positive. Uh, mm -hmm. We have this yeah. budget crisis. Uh, th think about the fact that 50% of people in prison today are there for simple marijuana possession. Wow. And think of the social cost of that. Think about the tax dollars we're using to support the prison system and incarcerate these people who have done really very little harm, social harm. Uh, the fact of the matter is when you look at it, medically speaking, mm -hmm. that marijuana is not as problematic as something like alcohol. I would expect in the state we'd see our, our police be able to focus on real crime, mm -hmm. uh, to reduce our uh, incarceration rate, uh, and to, uh, well, to, I, I think, create a better climate in, in, in the state, frankly. Okay, so, like, if it is decriminalized in November, so would that mean that anyone could like, grow pot in their closet? Like, is that, would that be legal? If no, well, the fast? state would probably put in some mechanism to regulate the, the, the growth and dispensation and taxation okay. of the things. See, that's one of the big issues. If you grow in your backyard, how are you going to pay a tax? That's okay? True. Now, you, there are simp a number of schemes one can think of, a permit scheme where you pay a certain fee mm -hmm. to grow a certain amount. Uh, but the problem with that, at least from my perspective, is how do you keep this out of the hands of minors? That's a critical issue. Mm -hmm. Now, we know with alcohol, w the state can develop effective mechanisms to limit the access of drugs to minors. We do that with alcohol all the mm -hmm. time, even though, of course, some alcohol does get consumed yeah. by children, or, or, or at least minors, I should say. Uh, but the state will have to put in place some sort of regulatory mechanism to make sure that the dispensation use and distribution of the drug is monitored and taxed. Okay, so. Mm -hmm. As it stands now, you have to get a permit, and do you think that, like, it would legalized, if you wanted to, like, sell, do you think you'd have to, like, also get a permit? Also? Yes, absolutely. Okay. And, in fact, the, the model some people have been putting forward is, to, is sort of the, the bar model, the corner mm -hmm. alcohol dispensing. Okay. Uh, think about it. I, I, this always bothers me. Why do we say drugs and alcohol? It's all drugs. Why do we yes, separate true. those two yeah. things out, you know? And what we see is that drugs is we view this thing as a highly negative thing. And that's yeah. really what's at, at conflict here, is how are we to perceive what marijuana is? Mm -hmm. Right now, by classifying it as a drug and exempting alcohol from that description, we are saying, oh, this is all n harmful and negative, and almost evil. And, but alcohol is just a sort of a special category. Uh, but that's a fictive uh, classification. Okay, so the, the premise would be something like, like how they do with liquor licenses, yeah. do you think? Okay. Yeah, and by the way, the, uh, bars don't have a very high profit margin. Uh, really? So these, these people wouldn't be making a lot of money. Would the, would the crime rate be affected? What do you think the, the effect on the crime rate would have? Oh, I had a very strongly positive one. First of all, by just simply erasing marijuana from the statute book, you would automatically be l reducing the crime rate, all right? So in asking that question, I think what you're asking me is beyond that simple fact. Mm -hmm. um, I know from personal experience uh, that people who want things will enter into criminal activity to obtain those things. Uh, if you legalize it, you remove that from the criminal sphere. Mm -hmm. um, think about money laundering. Mm -hmm. Think about the Mexican drug gangs. Uh, I mean, this will have an international effect. It won't just have a local effect. Of course, just Washington do it. Won't have th that kind of pronounced effect. But if we did that as a nation, uh, I think we could impact, uh, have a very positive impact on crime in Mexico. So I don't e want to think, want you to think about it, you know, in a yeah. narrowly focused yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it has broad effects. Okay. Um, like as the law stands, like normally when a law changes, they like grandfather it. Like when the drinking law changed from 18 to 21, if you were already 18, you still could drink right. until, okay. So do you think that if it was legalized in November, they would still, like the people who are in prisons would still have to fill out their sentences, or do you think they would just be released right there? I would hope that the governors of the individual states would be wise enough to grant sweeping pardons. Okay. I mean, actually, Governor Gregoire mm -hmm. uh, just called for the federal government, I don't know if it's just, but has called for the federal government to do exactly what it needs to do, and that's, this is the governor of, of our state. Mm -hmm. Please reclassify marijuana as other than Schedule One put it into Schedule 2, Schedule 3, whatever. 
And by the way, just as a footnote, the U.S. Uh, appeals court ruled in, in 1998 ordered the federal government to reclassify marijuana as other than Schedule One, and the federal government has refused to follow that court order. Okay. And in my opinion, all they have to do is say, I'm, I've chosen to follow the court order. Make it other than Schedule One, get scientific evidence to show where it belongs, mm -hmm. but once you get out of Schedule One, all other schedules uh, have medical benefits, mm -hmm. and that's where marijuana belongs. Okay. Well, thank you for joining us. Oh, you're quite welcome. Taking time out of your busy schedule. That's all the time we have for this program. Big thanks to Dr. Ogden and Professor Forden. Big thank you to the crew and everyone else for making this possible. Good night, Dice County. Recently, things have changed. After California legalized marijuana. Oh, that was almost perfect. Damn. <laughs> Legalization, you're talking when I'm talking and you're ruining the shot, Macy.